Hello and welcome to a new video. Today we're going to take a look at the Poiple in the Jungle Camp. This Pokemon is most likely not going to stay for too long like this in my inventory as he's going to have to evolve it very likely in terms of finishing the quest very soon. But we don't have this yet and it's most likely going to still be a month. So let's take a look at the Poiple in the Jungle Camp. And this Pokemon you might think is going to be horrific and you might be right but you might be also very wrong because there are actually quite a lot of matchups that this Pokemon can win which is kind of ridiculous because look at it it is kind of funny also we're going to take a look here today at a battle against the uh, former world champ i guess but also now current eyc winner me we actually battled him here with this team which is kind of funny but of course today you're going to be some more fun battles with also green ninja which is kind of funny as well as the safe swap of um the cloud sire cloud sire really helps us here for this team we're going to talk about this a little bit later as well but honestly, here's one of the matchups where, for example, our Poipal is going to have a great time. You're going to be able to basically completely restore something like our Bummer Snow with the fast move of Poison Jab. But also you're going to be able to wall something like the Vigoroth. You're going to be able to win always in the two-shoot scenario, just going straight for the bait move here, actually, which is kind of funny. But here we're going to see in the back the opponent running that land here. We just have to hit a one-charge move in order to basically put them into farm range, but they decide to forfeit anyway. So, moving on, we're going to have the next opponent here. We're going to have the lead of the normal Stunfisk, which is kind of interesting, which is a very solid Pokemon. I think they're swapped into an Altaria here, which is not really ideal for us, but what we can do is we can overfarm by quite a bit, so we keep our energy for later on and swap out into our Clodzaya. Clodzaya having access to the move Stone Edge, most likely going to put them into range where we might be even able to farm down afterwards. They have to go for the Sky Attack as the Moonblast would be resisted. And so we're in a decent spot. This is going to get some decent damage onto them. I wish I did a little bit more damage as well prior. If they caught like a knight, this would have been way better for me. But um, as you can see, the sky attack is coming through. We can still get the shield from them or the knockout against them. Either which I'm going to be fine with. And they decide to actually let this move go through. And they're going to go back into the stun first, which will allow me to go for one earthquake. This is going to be great as this is going to be able to do a ton of damage. I can swap out at this point, go for the Night Search bait because there's no reason not to. And we're going to get a shield and we're going to see the swap into the Manta and we can go for another uh, Night Search here as well afterwards, which is going to be great. And so we are in a position where maybe Poiple going to be able to just sweep endgame. Why? Because we can boost our own attack on this Pokemon, which is kind of wild. And so we're going to do quite a lot of damage with our fast move of Poison Jab. But also, we kind of want to maybe catch a move eventually here from that Mantine. I'm a little bit scared of this Mantine, so I decide to also use a shield here. It is going to be that Aerial Ace. I don't really like this, but look at this. I like this a lot. We're going to be able to go ahead and catch a move here. Ice Beam going to go to waste as we see the Stunfisk coming back in, going for one super effective mud bomb which we are able to shield up and we can go for the boost which is going to get shielded as well and so we are going to try to farm them all the way down but can we survive a mud bomb yes we can actually poiple is not the um, weakest pokemon ever and here we had a cmp tie which is going to be amazing because now we can knock them out boost our attack and sweep the opponent's team so let's move on to the next opponent we're going to have one of the worst possible leads for this team, which is going to be the Lantern. They swap out into the Mantine, which is a little bit better for me, as I can go for the Stone Edge spam, which is going to be super effective. But of course, they guarantee you have also a super effective move here with either the Ice Beam or the Water Pulse. I should most likely use a shield on the first one, but I decide not to, which is kind of silly because now they could in theory just go ahead and go for the bait the entire time, but they decide to use another shield here, which is kind of interesting. So here I'm going to use a shield as well, most likely because I need a little bit of damage on them. It's going to be the water pulse, which is great, and so I can go for another stone edge, which is going to force the opponent to... Yeah, let this move go through. At this point, maybe I should have actually swapped out into my Poiple because I could have kept my Clodsire for the Lantern and I think this would have been the better play. They're going to swap into the Lantern anyway. We are forced to, I think, go for one Feldstinger and then go for a Sludge Bomb. A Sludge Bomb alone will not be able to knock them out, but with the boost, we should be kind of fine. Should have went for my Feldstinger a little bit um, earlier because this would allow us to get already a little bit better damage with my Fast Move alone, but it does not really matter because you're definitely going to be in Sludge Bomb range now. Anyway, we can over farm maybe by one. Yep, we can. But now we have to hope that there's something in the back that we can still deal with. We can knock them out here. What is going to be in the back? It's going to be the Mantine again. 
again. I kind of want to know what they're going to have as a final Pokemon, though. As we can go for another charge move here, Faust thing are going to connect. Going to get our boost again here, which does not really matter too much. We have to hope there's something in the back that we can deal with. It is going to be that Gustlord, and yeah, maybe I could have played a little bit better. If I actually kept my Cloud Sire in that game, and if I swapped into my Poipel, I would have most likely been fine in this battle. But it is what it is. We're going to see here the next opponent coming through. It is going to be someone with a great lead for us and a Pokemon that I don't really like too much here with the Mantine. The thing is, for Poipel, Poipel gets completely destroyed by any kind of Steel type Pokemon. So avoiding this Steelix here is going to be great for us already. I can let this next move go through as well. And I don't really need to realign because we have two Pokemon that are decent against Steelix. And now we can talk a little bit about why Clotzea is also so nice for this team. Basically, any kind of Steel type Pokemon is going to be very good against Poipel. And um, our lead of the Greninja is kind of based to counter those Steel type Pokemon. For example, something like the Steelix there, where all charge moves are going to be resisted by us. Or also something like the um, Skarmory, especially. And especially for Skarmory, you're going to be able to usually bait it out with your Cloth Sire, which is really important. And you can still kind of punish it with the Stone Edge. The matchup is kind of neutral for you. And so it's actually a great Pokemon to fit the purpose of baiting out the Skarmory, still being able to do something against it, but just getting rid of those Steel types as well against our Poipel. While also we are going to be able to counter those Steelix still as well when my lead goes down, which is kind of great as well. So, I'm forced to use a shield here against the opponents. Um, the Sidjoy, it is still going to be a tough matchup for me. I can go for another Stone Edge here to knock them out before they can go for another charge move. The Sidjoy is now everywhere, also after I did my video about it recently. But yeah, it is what it is. We're going to be able to use a shield against the opponent's Steelix. This is going to be the Psychic Fangs. I can try to reach this, uh, the Earthquake in time, which I'm going to be able to do. Is this going to be enough to knock them out? It is, and we can win this game. Now up against me, Riedel, former world champ, and also here the now new EOIC winner. If you haven't seen my video about this, definitely check it out as well. Great battles from him, like congrats to him as well, like I know him from like in real life as well. So very cool person, so very happy that he won this, definitely well deserved, like such a great battler. Can't wait to um, also go to tournaments again. Kind of kind of missing this, but it's kind of tricky for me to go to tournaments in my current situation. Going to move very, very soon. And so I'm kind of saving up money. It's kind of trying to organize myself a little bit better. And still having university on the side as well is a little bit tricky. Yes, I don't do YouTube as my full-time job. Um, so yeah, it is like a little bit tricky for me currently to do anything outside doing work and moving, but it is what it is. You're gonna see the matchup against the Vigoroth, and this is actually something that I thought they still survive that body stamp, so this was definitely a mistake by me. I thought that this matchup would be a little bit better for me, but it wasn't, and so I have to hope that Poipel are going to be great against whatever they have in the back. It is going to be literally the worst possible matchup for me, and so yeah, this is going to be sadly a loss. We can still hope for a boost. If we get an early boost, we still have a small chance. We didn't get an early boost. And I have to say, I don't think I got a single boost with the Greninja at all this gameplay here. So it is what it is. We can move on to the next opponent. Good game there. And congrats again to winning UIC. I rather see something like a Steelix here and look at the opponent. Someone who also has some fun with Salamence. If you haven't seen my Salamence video as well yet, definitely check it out. Fun Pokemon to use was actually way better than I thought. Kinda got me higher up to, closer to Legend then, which of course Legend I hit recently. But of course it only has Outrage, Hydro Pump and Fire Blast and Draco Media. So it really needs a bait move. Maybe, um, I think there's like something like double wing beat or something, so I don't know, like it's, it's uh, definitely there's a flying type move that this Pokemon can still learn, which might be a very decent one as like either a fast move or as a very sh a cheap -ish charge move, which might be kind of cool. Dual wing beat, I think it's called. Um, very cool move though for PvP, and I would imagine that we're going to see that very soon because a lot of Pokemon would really prefer to have a move like this. But um, yeah, definitely something that might make Salamence way more viable if it's like a 35 energy move for like 60 damage or 40, 55 damage. I think it would be kind of great for those flying type Pokemon. But here we are going to see a Venusaur in the back. Can we still win against the Venusaur? That's going to be a very tricky one. We're kind of forced to let this move go through. As the Frenzy Plant is not going to knock us out and we can still go for a Stone Edge. That's at least great. Maybe we kind of would have liked to go for an Earthquake instead, but it's going to be a, still a very close battle here. We can go for a Night Surge against the opponent in order to get the knockout, but the Steelix is still here. But we can definitely go for a Hydro Cannon. Is a Hydro Cannon enough from this range? It is a CMP tie, so if we don't knock them out, we lose. Let's see. 
boom, knocking him out, and we win this game. Here, yeah, this is actually an alt account from uh, Big ML, who is like also uh, one of the earliest streamer for Pokemon Go PvP as well. But was actually the first person that I watched streaming in general for this game. I didn't even know that stream was a thing back in the day. And also kind of inspired me to stream for myself, so shout out to him as well. Very cool dude. Also German, just like me. But um, we have a horrible lead here with a Whimsicott against us. But they decide to make an interesting play of swapping out into a Lantern here. Which is amazing for me. It's literally the best matchup on my team for the Lantern. So especially if I can realign, I would be totally happy about it. So let's see what we can do here. The surface coming through. We can go for another Earthquake. I don't really care. I just really would like to realign. So they're going to let the Smooth go through, which is going to be fine. Can we farm them all the way down? It kind of looks like that. And so what we decide to do is we decide to use a shield, farm them down, align ourselves. We have a Hydro Can stored on our Greninja. And we're going to be able to hit some Stone Edges against the Whimsicott. But you know, what is the hardest answer in the entire matter for Miriam's Accord, it is the Pokemon we have in the back. And also, look at the Stone Edge, going to not connect, but going to definitely get the final shield as we can knock them out here with our Greninja. I most likely would be able to knock out the final Pokemon now with my Greninja as well. But as you're gonna see here right now, I'm gonna go for the Under Charge, not to disrespect the opponent, just to showcase what I have in the back because it's hilarious. They can knock me out here, go for it, have fun with that. I just want to showcase what I have in the back because look at the poison jab damage. See you later and we can move on to the next opponent. We're gonna see a great lead for us. We're gonna have a Skamry against us, which is going to be amazing as we can try to go for some Hydro Cannons. This is going to do some massive damage. They win the Zero Shields, but they don't win anything else as far as I know, as we just outspeed them like so easily. So yeah, of course, Zero Shields, they go, would be able to win if they go for Brave Bird. Skytech would knock me out, but we can over farm by a little bit, have two Hydro Cannons now if they use a Shield. I go for my next one immediately afterwards. They decide to not use a Shield, and so we have a ton of energy and a whisk cash and this kind of tells me that there is most likely a pokemon in the back that i really don't want to face and this is the thing as well for this team if it's going to be Skarmory, double mud boy um basically greninja has to beat the entire team from the opponent and while greninja is a very strong pokemon that is very great at sweeping opponents in the lead it's sometimes difficult with all the shields that i don't play and so what we're gonna see here is that the opponent is gonna go down here with uh, their pokemon but we're also going to have a uh, Quagsay. I'm forced to go for this charge move here because otherwise they would outspeed me to the next one. And so they're going to go for an awkward tail very soon. Never mind, they farm me down. This is even worse. Because like this, they have a ton of energy. They are forced to go for three awkward tails because they didn't have the fast move damage in their prior. But I'm basically screwed. Like what am I supposed to do here? I can take another awkward tail, but I can swap out, I guess. Like, I don't know. I'm forced to go for a Feldstinger, but like... Does it really help me? I don't know, do we get completely swept by a Quagsire now? I have literally no idea, or can our Poipel win this game still? Let's find out. We can see that the opponent overfarmed by quite a bit. Sadly, a little bit too much, and yes, we're gonna get swept by entire Quagsire, but like it is what it is. We can move on, we can hope that we can win the final game, let's see how this is gonna go. Stunfisk again in the lead, which is good to be okay for me. I take this. The opponent stays in again. Do they catch again? They try to catch here with a Vigoroth, and I'm still going to go for a charge move here because it would do a ton of damage. And afterwards, I can go into my Clodzire, I guess, which is also fine. Show into my Poipel most likely and just um, sacrificed it because it's going to be a very decent matchup for the Poipel in general. But I guess I'm definitely going to be able to align myself if I really want to here as well. I mostly just have to use some shields, which is not really ideal. But um, Cloudside can just tank all the energy that the opponent stored up anyway. We can go for two stone edges, which should hopefully be enough. We can still survive this one, which is great. Um, it is going to be a little bit of a trickier one here for sure. But we have to see if maybe Greninja are going to be able to sweep endgame as well. Could be the case. Here we're going to see that we can realign, which is totally happy for me. They can try to farm me down, but I don't think that's going to work for them. I should have went for the Stone Edge there, most likely just to bait. But it is going to be okay. We can use the shield. Discharge coming through. They're going to swap out into the Mantan. And now it's down to Poipel to win this game for us. Can Poipel do it? We will find out shortly. We are not going to be in a position where we can go for baits. We have to go straight for the Sludge Bomb here in order to get some damage onto them. CMP tying on them, hoping that they're going to knock me out afterwards anyway. Sludge Bomb is going to connect. And so the opponent is going to be very low with that. And it's going to be in range where I can go for some Night Sashes. But I have to over farm. 
Let's see if they're going to use a shield or not. If they use a shield, this would be amazing. They decide to not use a shield. So I have to over farm by a little bit as well. And at this point, my only play is to go for another fast move and hope that I have two hydro cannons. And I don't. So I have to go for the bait here. Does the opponent fall for it? Hopefully they do. They do and we can win the CMP tie and this also wins us the final game. Hopefully this was entertaining for you to see some Poipel gameplay here in the Jungle Cup. If you enjoyed it, feel free to leave a like and subscribe and I'll see you then. Bye bye.